Guys, this is a video that I have been so torn about posting for a little bit, um, for multiple different reasons. It's also a video that I've had to film twice. Because the first time I had green hair and there was no audio, so... Like how I look in the aqua green, get your vaseline. Yeah, I just want to make it very clear from the start, uh, this is not a drama video, I don't do that on my channel. Um, I also don't analyse other people's diets on this channel. Um, yeah, I've given my opinion about certain diets within other videos, but I don't spend my time analysing or responding to other people on the internet. I try and focus on what I'm doing and just doing it well. I mean, whether I am or not, I don't know, but as a YouTuber, I just try and do my thing with tunnel vision and not look around. But having said that, there comes a time and a place when um, if I see something that is very confusing and I think is confusing a lot of other people and also if I'm being honest very unethical I'm gonna call it out because the truth must always prevail I'm so thirsty already bloody hell I do have some very strong opinions about what I'm gonna be talking about today which is obviously Abby Sharp um, remember that they are just my opinions they're not facts but also I wouldn't sit here and talk about something unless I was absolutely sure Okay, so, so some of them are facts. And obviously I'm not making this video because I'm sour, because I've been given a bad diet review by Abby Sharp or anything. In fact, it's the complete... I was gonna go with the word antithesis. I think that's the right word. I think it's the right word. We're gonna go with it. It's the complete opposite. In fact, I've watched a lot of Abby Sharp's videos, her diet reviews, um, and I don't think I've actually seen one as positive as the way she reviewed mine and how complimentary and kind and like promoting of my channel that she was um, and I really appreciate that um, I do think that there are certain things that I do do well on this channel in terms of like building balanced meals I will admit that my consumption of fat is most times quite excessive um, and probably not the right amount for most vegans, but I've always openly said that myself. I have a few very important points that I want to cover in this video, and I do ask that you stay till the end because they're all just as important. Um, and also, this video is not just about me. This is not just me responding to the video she made about me. It's about the bigger picture. And when I say the bigger picture, I really want to drum into everyone's head that's watching this that there is no one authority on nutrition in this world. There's not, okay? And it's very evident from looking at any of her comment sections that the young impressionable people that watch her videos literally take every word that she says as gospel. There are many dietitians that promote similar things to what Abby promotes, such as intuitive eating, including animal products in the diet. But on the flip side, there are just as many qualified health professionals, doctors, dietitians, nutritionists, etc. that promote a fully plant-based vegan diet and would completely disagree with a lot of the stuff that Abby Sharp says. So please get that into your head first. There is no one authority on nutrition in this world. And in my opinion, if there was to be one, it certainly would not be Abby Sharp. You don't own the theater. I'm sure by now many of you know about the fruit situation. And this is not the premise of this video, but I think it's important that I bring this up first because I'm directly involved. Um, again, Abby gave me an amazing review, reviewed three days of my diet and was very complimentary, very kind to me, said I was a great example to follow, however, you weren't showing the full picture. And also this is not what has triggered me wanting to make this video, I've been, uh, I've had a problem with some of Abby's stuff for a while, um, which she knows because we've had email conversations about this. Again, not saying that she's a bad person, I just completely disagree with some of the stuff that she's doing, promoting, analysing etc. So yeah, she reviewed my diet, but she cut the fruit out. And when I say cut fruit out, I don't mean like, oh, I had an, an apple for a snack or I put one banana in my smoothie. No, she cut nine pieces of fruit out of the video. I was only made aware of this because again, I mean, I have so many full days of eating. I can't remember what I ate in all of them. In fact, I can't remember what I ate in any of them, to be quite honest, if I just looked at the thumbnail. But it was brought to my attention because a lot of other YouTubers that I guess watch my channel, and a lot of you guys that watch my channel made me aware that the fruit eating in that video had been cut out. Um, I clearly said and showed in the first video that I ate nine pieces of fruit, like Sharon fruit, for my first meal of the day. And they have kind of a crunch to them, and my god, they are the sweetest thing. Like, they're actually sweeter than dates. And you know what I'm like with the sweet fruit. Once I start, 
there's no stopping. So this morning when I came back from the gym, I say this morning, it was about 12 o'clock, so midday. I ate, I think, about eight or nine of these. I mean, they are pretty small. It was cut out, it was edited out. Again, originally, I didn't know this. And when I left Abby a comment saying, thank you for being very kind about my diet, my lifestyle, my attitude towards food. I don't have anything against you personally. I just disagree with certain things that you said and the format that you're doing your videos as in over analyzing everyone unnecessarily. If you're familiar with Abby Sharp's channel, um, she's notorious for calling people out for eating too much fruit. Yes, you heard that right, too much fruit. And again, I'm not someone that promotes like an only fruit diet or a raw vegan diet. I just think that fruit is such a healthy food, which I eat a lot of. I've always been the biggest promoter of fruit. Well, maybe not the biggest. I'm sure like Freely is the biggest, um, but I am a big promoter of whole fruits. Don't forget we're living in a world where people are addicted to refined sugar. Um, so to call people out for eating too much fruit, which Abby does consistently and has done to many vegans in the, in the other videos that she's reviewed of other popular vegan YouTubers. So when I realized that the video had been manipulated, I sent her an email and asked her specifically, why did you cut the fruit out? I was actually worried that you were gonna criticize me just like you have to every other vegan for eating a lot of fruit in one go. Again, I'm not someone that eats like a fruitarian diet or raw till four, but when I have access to good fruit, I will go to town on it. I love fruit, it's healthy, I'm a big promoter of fruit, let's just get that clear. I actually asked her about a few things that I kind of had a problem with, gave her my thoughts on certain things. I think it's always good to communicate with people to know where they stand and where their thoughts are coming from before you kind of make a video like this. I was very specific to make sure that I put the why did you cut out my fruit meals in a separate paragraph so that it wasn't kind of missed within the rest of the email. It was completely ignored. She replied to everything else but completely ignored the fact that she had cut fruit eating out of my video. It's not as if it wasn't one apple or one pear. It was nine pieces of fruit and you always criticize vegans for eating fruits which again is ridiculous. I'm sorry but this is extremely confusing Number one, why would you criticize people consuming more fresh fruit when in reality most people in this world do not eat enough? Number two, it's a very healthy food. And I think the biggest issue here is that on one hand, Abby promotes intuitive eating and says, eat as much cake as you want until you don't crave it anymore. Eat cookies, eat ice cream. I think she even talked about her own experience with intuitive eating and said, she went through a phase of eating just boxes of sugary cereal until she didn't crave it anymore. So it's like on one hand, you're promoting intuitive eating and telling people to eat whatever they want. On the other hand, you're absolutely over analyzing people's diets and calling people out for eating too much fresh fruit. So which one is it? Because these are two very different things. Intuitive eating is more about go with the flow, listen to your body, um, honor your cravings. Yes, of course, think about nutrition too, but it's more about being flexible, going with the flow. Yet, on the other hand, she's reviewing videos and it's like every single meal, it's like, oh, I'd like to see a bit more protein. Oh, that's a bit too high in sugar because of the fruit. Oh, I'd like to see a bit more of this or a bit less of that. Which one is it? You really can't have it both ways here. It's very confusing. The thing is, right, if she were to have included the fruit um, in the video, then she would have had to have criticized it, right? Because just like she's criticized everyone else for eating multiple pieces of fruit in one go, because apparently it's too much sugar, which is ridiculous. And if she showed it and didn't criticize it, then she would be a hypocrite. It leads me to think, has she realized that her comments about fruit in the past are stupid and actually looked at the research? As part of a well-planned vegan diet, there is nothing wrong. In fact, in my opinion, there's everything right with eating a lot of whole fresh fruit as well as vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, avocados, healthy fats, the whole shebang. But why are we vilifying fruit, but promoting cake? Guys, it's actually blowing a hurricane outside. You can probably hear it. I'm not saying, and I've never said that you shouldn't ever eat junk food. I eat vegan ice cream, I eat cook vegan cookies, I eat vegan pizza, but I'm not here telling people to intuitive eat and then over analyzing every single plate of people that you don't even know. For those of you that don't know, I am also a health professional. I'm not a registered dietitian like Abby, but I did go to college for four years for biomedicine, anatomy and physiology and nutrition. And I have four years clinical practice in nutrition. Again, one of the reasons why I felt torn to make this is because some of the stuff that Abby has said in her videos, I've agreed with. There is definitely a time and a place as a health professional to call out 
things that are dangerous. If someone is promoting that you only eat, say, 1200 calories a day, or if someone is promoting that you do a prolonged like water fast or juice fast or just something very restrictive like never eat any overt fats, by all means call it out because it's dangerous. There is absolutely a time and a place for that and I support that. One thing that really made the tipping point for me to make this video was uh, many of you would have seen she did review uh, one of my best friends in real life, Nutty Foodie Fitness. She reviewed her video and honestly I couldn't even get past 10 minutes because the frustration that I had watching that video, again I don't want to speak on behalf of Steph but I'm kind of going to a bit because I'm using this as an example. If you are going to review someone on the internet, make damn sure you've done your research properly. In the first five to ten minutes of the video of the video that Abby made on Steph, she was speculating saying, yeah, because Steph eats a lot of food, she eats a lot of calories and she's just genetically gifted. Trust me, I know her. She doesn't have any issues with food. Um, she doesn't overexercise. In fact, she does very little exercise but has the most incredible physique, but she eats a lot of food. She probably eats like twice the amount that I eat. It's just her, it's just her genetics. And for Abby to sit there in the first 10 minutes and speculate about whether or not she was a binge eater or she was having huge cheat days is so unprofessional and so damaging to someone's reputation. So I am a bit concerned that this is teetering in kind of eating challenge cheat day territory. This also sounds eerily similar to our friend Olivia Adams from Always Hungry. And I know in her defense she would say, oh but at the end of the video, you know, like at the 45 minute mark, I, I said some great things about Stephanie. Abby, 90% of people that watch anyone's videos do not stay until the end. I really think if you're going to analyze someone's diet, that you need to do your full homework on them, right? I feel like you need to know them as well as a fan, as a subscriber would know them. It's not okay to just watch one or two videos and make all of these assumptions. But also, what made you think that those videos were cheat days? What, like, why would you even speculate that in the first 10 minutes of the video when the videos you were analyzing were called on her channel normal full day of eating? I'm not saying Abby is a bad person, but in my mind, this is highly highly unprofessional and potentially damaging as well. And if you would have done your research properly, you would have known that in about 25 different videos, she has explained that she needs to eat a lot and she's genetically just that size. So for you to come on the internet and speculate for hundreds of thousands of people to see that she's a possible binge eater or having cheat days, I'm sorry, but from one health professional to another, in fact, you know what, scrap that, from one human to another, this is highly unethical and just very unprofessional in my opinion. <laughs> Again, I'm just going to use my own video as an example um, of how I think you really have to question everything you're watching on the internet these days, in including me. But then again, I'm not here analyzing everyone's diet. I'm not here pushing a diet plan. I don't have an ebook or a way of eating that tells you what to do and how to do it. She's consistently obsessed with telling people to add more protein to their meals. And I get that right. I've talked about it in the past that I personally don't feel satiated. Well, not that I don't feel satiated, but because not all my meals are high protein, obviously. But I have said that as someone that has a big black hole of a stomach, eating more protein does help to satiate me. That being said, Abby is very quick to um, compliment anyone who adds an egg to their breakfast because therefore they've got a source of protein. One egg has six grams of protein. The second meal that she reviewed of mine, which was essentially brunch, which was a big meal of potatoes, green beans, broccoli, lots of tahini, hemp seeds, lemon juice. It was just like a big, like a big mess, but a big tasty mess. And she was quick to point out, yeah, you know, again, with her overanalyzing mind, yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to see some, you know, a good source of protein with this meal, maybe some tofu, maybe some this, maybe. Um, but I mean, if we really want to talk balance, we could add a little more protein in this. Maybe throw in some silken tofu in the dressing or serve it with a side of seared tofu, but at least we're getting a little from the hemp and the tahini. It's actually quite ridiculous. Um, I, I put the meal that I ate, the one that she kind of said, oh, I'd like to see, you know, some more protein in. I put it into chronometer and considering the amount of hemp seeds and tahini that I clearly showed I put on the meal, it came to roughly 28 grams of protein, which is actually a very high protein breakfast, especially for a vegan breakfast. So why is that not acceptable and it needs an extra source of protein? Just because it's all come from plants and I didn't add any like overt proteins. But if someone was to eat a slice of toast, 
with one egg on top, which only contained six grams of protein, that would get praised. Again, this is just all very confusing to me. It's not just confusing me, it's confusing a lot of people. Um, it's very evident by the comments that are con constantly left on my channel and on other places around the internet where I've seen. I'm going to talk about the oil thing quickly. I know Mike the Vegan made a video about this recently responding. I personally haven't watched it yet um, because I don't, I don't get involved in this argument about whether we should or shouldn't eat oil. Um, I just have always said I don't think oil is a health food, but I'm also not petrified of it and I do use it sometimes. That being said, I don't, again, coming back to the whole, you're promoting intuitive eating, which is supposed to take the emphasis off perfection, supposed to take the emphasis off being obsessed with food, with over-analyzing meals, going with the flow, listening to your body. So you're promoting that, but then you're also quick to criticize and call out a very balanced vegan meal that has lots of greens, colorful veggies, whole starches, legumes, healthy plant fats, and then you criticize it because it doesn't have oil on top. And then making claims that oil is a satiating food. Again, I personally don't have any problems with consuming oil myself. But let's not lie, oil is not a satiating food. It's also not an essential food. And especially if you're trying to take the emphasis off people being obsessed and overanalyzing, why criticize a well-balanced meal just because it didn't have a drizzle of olive oil? It's actually a bit beyond me. And on top of that, um, another thing that Abby has constantly done is call people out for eating um, huge amounts of vegetables, huge amounts of salads. And again, if you've watched any of my full days of eatings, I actually don't think there's anyone on vegan... Yeah, yeah, there are definitely people that eat more fruit than me, but I actually would find it very hard to find someone that consumes as many greens as I do. I've, I've talked about it in the past, that my consumption of greens is actually excessive. I've said it myself. And Abby has called other people out for eating too many vegetables, like an unnecessary big quantity of them. And in all of my videos, I've been very clear to say, I don't even eat out of a normal bowl. I eat out of a bowl that's like so big. It's like five times bigger than my head. And I can put like three heads of romaine in there. So why call other people out for that, but not me? Again, I could just sit here and let everyone watch that video and think my diet's perfect. Everyone come and follow me. But no, that's not the case. Again, I'm finding this quite difficult because Abby is someone that has been so incredibly nice to me um, publicly and, you know, via email, just very kind, very showing a lot of love. And I'm not saying she's a bad person. I'm just saying that her message is very confusing. And I think at sometimes very unprofessional as well in the way that she's doing it. And there are other ways to get your point across rather than using other people's names in your titles um, and then speculating about their lifestyle when you haven't even done your research properly. And yeah, you could say that there are many vegans um, freely being one of them that also does diet responses. And again, I've said before, I don't agree. I don't wholeheartedly agree with Freely's advice. And I think her vegan message would be a thousand times more powerful if she were to be more inclusive and accepting of other types of healthy vegan diets rather than the one she promotes herself. But having said that, even though I don't agree with some of the stuff that Freely says, her main goal is to stop people eating animals. Um, and of course I respect that because it's a big part of my life as well. Um, in fact, I feel quite guilty for not talking about the ethical side of things on this channel, but yeah. I'm also gonna give my opinion on this. Um, I know this is going to be a very controversial point um, and I'm not someone that shames people for not being vegan. Um, but because a lot of you have asked me to address this in the comments and the messages I'm getting, um, I personally don't think that saying because you used to be orthorexic in the past that it's a valid excuse to never go vegan in the future. I completely disagree with that. I come from someone that used to be, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure if I was orthorexic, but I just had a very, very bad eating disorder, which almost killed me. But there is a big difference between not eating something because you fear it out of orthorexia and choosing not to eat something because you know it's bad for the planet and it's damaging the planet, it's damaging the environment, it's unethical, it's essentially doing damage to the planet that you don't own. I'm not shaming people for not being vegan. 
and I'm also not telling people that are in recovery from eating disorders that they should go vegan. I've been very outspoken about this in the past. Everyone is on their own journey. But to give the message across that just because you've been orthorexic in the past, that that's an you know that's a blanket excuse for never going vegan, it 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 doesn't it doesn't really make sense to me. And yeah, this might surprise you, but I'm actually going to criticize my own diet a bit now, considering Abby didn't at all. If I were to critique my own diet in general, some of the things that I'm actually quite surprised that Abby didn't pick up on, um, and it's something that I've been very open about on this channel, is that I've always said that it's very important to have a healthy omega-3 to 6 balance. Now we all know that I am wholeheartedly addicted to tahini, and that's never going to change, but I've also said that I eat tahini and nut butters in copious quantities. And that most people probably shouldn't do that. Again, tahini is a very healthy food. It's full of calcium, iron, fiber, protein. It makes your salads taste delicious, salads. And it's something that everyone can include in their diet in reasonable amounts. Obviously, I eat it in excessive amounts. So if I were to critique my own diet, I would absolutely say, yeah, this guy eats a lot of vegetables, eats a lot of fruit even though Abby tried to pretend that I didn't. Eats a lot of whole grains, eats legumes, eats sweet potatoes, eats avocados, eats all the good things. But the omega-3 to 6 balance is way off. I eat way too much omega-6 in my diet. And I've always admitted that. And I think that anyone, even if you're not a health professional, would be able to realize that by watching my videos. So even though I do base my diet on a lot of whole healthy foods, um, and if I'm being honest, this is probably the healthiest I've ever felt in my life. But if you are going to pick apart my diet or overanalyze things, then let's be honest, my omega 6 to 3 ratio is is bollocks. So again, I'm not saying you shouldn't eat tahini. You should all eat tahini. I'm so um, dedicated towards tahini and got fed up of the world eating thick, bitter sludge that I, that I even started my own company called Liquid Gold um, because I want the whole world to enjoy proper, runny Arabic tahini. Um, and I'm so glad that so many of you are enjoying it. But, but then again, you probably shouldn't eat as much as I do in one day because my consumption of it is absolutely excessive. So yeah, that's just me being honest. Just remember, I do not hate Abby Sharp at all. She's been very kind to me, but I also, again, she makes all of her videos public, you know, criticizing, critiquing, applauding, overanalyzing, speculating about everyone's diet and lifestyle. So I'm going to respond publicly. This video is not just about me. Um, I could have just said absolutely nothing about my own diet review um, and because it was great, right? It made me look great. But um, when there are things going on around it that are, in my opinion, dishonest and unethical, um, I'm not going to sit here and be quiet about it. And, and actually, do you know what? Like, do you know what? Yeah, even if she hadn't reviewed my diet, um, I've had these strong opinions for a while. Um, and I think the end message is, like I said at the beginning of the video, there is not one almighty authority on nutrition. Um, you know, always question everything. This is me just calling it for how it is. Anyways, guys, as always, leave all your comments and questions down below. I'm sending you all so much love. And next video, probably back in the kitchen cooking up a storm. And yeah, laters.